plaintiff, Karen Tabor, says the defendant is her son, and he was so out of control as a child that Karen could not raise him. Karen claims she was forced to file an emergency order of protection against her son after he assaulted her, and she's suing for stolen property. Defendant Chris Klingenstein says he had an extremely rough childhood because Karen's an alcoholic and he was forced to grow up in foster care. Chris denies stealing from his mother and he's countersuing for rent, hotel bills, and emotional distress. Start with you. Um, I'm here because uh, this is my son, Chris. I raised him until he was about 10 years old. Um, when I remarried, uh, my husband and him did not get along. Uh, he went to live with his father and he was awarded to the state. They couldn't take care of him because he was an out of control child. He was always in trouble. You couldn't either? Uh, they did not contact me at that time. Oh, you didn't know? No. And he, uh, when he, he was, he started fires when How he was How often younger. were you in, in touch with him? Well, when he went to live with his father, um, you know, they moved away and I had no contact. He stayed in Kentucky. I know, but anybody had phones? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, he never contacted me. Oh, the 10 year old never contacted you? <laughs> no, Her, his father never contacted so, me. So, <laughs> because the 10 year old couldn't call you, you made him a ward of the state. Uh, his uh, uncle, aunt and uncle, they, did, they tried to uh, get in touch with me and- couldn't. Then, but the state had already taken over, and by the time that I got word of it, you didn't try and get your son. Out I of, did try to get him. And what they tell you? My husband. Uh, we had a, a daughter together, and he had, we had custody of two other children from his previous marriage. So you didn't want the headache? No. <laughs> That's wrong. All right. So he the daughter, having, you all have a daughter together, your husband and you. She's twenty-five. Oh, okay. Let me hear from you, sir. Um. The daughter she speaks of is actually one of my witnesses right here. She's actually on my side. Um, the, the reason for that is because she also gave up her rights to her daughter. I have legal documentation that says she also gave up her rights to her daughter. Is that true, ma'am? 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 Yes. No, I didn't give up legal rights to my daughter. And the reason why she gave up legal rights to her daughter, Your Honor, is because Maybe she's an I'm alcoholic. You got the wrong person here. Your name Karen Tabor? <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's it absolutely is. what you did. And I don't know what documents those are. But oh, sworn affidavits from oh, okay. the courts. From the courts. No, I have divorce papers that state what I... Uh, Good enough, man. Your Honor, my mother's an alcoholic. You give me some background. Oh, okay. How long has she been an alcoholic? All of her life. I was in foster care all my life. Um, I was adopted at age 13 um, by a very good family um, who took care of me. They're still in my life to this day. Um, I consider them my actual mother and father. They take care of me. Um, I have had I have had a rough life. Um, I've been in and out of jail. I've done things that I probably shouldn't have done. Um, and I don't want to use that as an excuse for anything that I've done. Mm -hmm. uh, So I have um, DUI paperwork from where she's been arrested twice in the past year for DUIs. Ma'am, you have an alcohol problem? I do drink, but I maintain my employment and my uh, bills. I can and disagree with that. I do well. have a, a, a steady job history. What about these uh, and driving? It doesn't affect there? my work. No, uh, it does affect your driving, obviously. <laughs> that's it. Huh? That's it. That's it. <laughs> Like that's not a bad thing. I mean, thing, huh? no, it is. That's I a, mean, that's I'm not saying. That's the least of things, huh? But, you know, when you risk other people's lives, first of all, you give your kids away because you don't want to take care of them, and now you're out here drunk driving, risking other people's lives. You're the worst. Go ahead, tell me what that. If you know all this, why would you come here? <laughs> Court. If you knew he was going to say all this and he was going to be able to prove because it and that you were going to get tongue twisted when I asked you about raising your kids and how they ended up in uh, foster care. <laughs> Uh, your sister want to speak before we get back into the stolen property? I'm sure she um, would, Your Honor. Ma'am, state your name. Uh, my name is Amber Blevins. Mm -hmm. I'm 25. My mother, um, 
She gave me up twice, actually. No. The, the first time was when her and my father were divorced, but I don't actually have the documentation with me today to prove that. But That's a lie. The, the second time was when I was 16. I did go to Job Corps. Um, I lived on campus and had a dorm. I had plenty of friends there. Um, I wasn't even aware that my mother gave up custody of me until a week and a half ago. I believe. No one gave up custody of when you. I, when I got that paperwork. Thank God you're doing all right. You look like a healthy, well-maintained uh, young lady. Good. Good to hear that. Anything to else before we get to the property? And you want to say anything else? Stolen property. What did uh, they? I, what did he do? Can I, can I say sure, something? Sure, come right up. Okay. State uh, your name. Uh, okay. State uh, your uh, name. Uh, Brenda Box. Okay. The thing Amber said about her mom giving her up and her other uh, son. Amber gave up both of her kids too. A one, a little girl before a year old that her dad has been raising, and her son, four years old. Her husband, ex-husband, has had in. Custody of, custody now. of it. Let me, uh, let me inform you. Yes. When one of the parents still have the child, they haven't abandoned or given them up. She's like not. She's she divorced. Did. She's divorced. Go have a seat, man. Okay. She's have divorced. A seat. But the father has the child. You clearly know nothing about parenthood. The father has the children. But you give your. Have children up to the social services. She doesn't have either. Let's one of move her on, ma'am. Okay. Let me get you out of here real quick. Because you have no understanding about parenthood. You abandoned these kids. Stolen property for what? Uh, he broke into my shed and Good. stole my lawn tractor <laughs> and sold it. I have pictures. I have EPOs. I have. Give me your he, police he report where me. you filed a police report about him stealing. That's what you're here for today. Stealing okay. property. Do you he have sold, that? He stole property. Do you he have a, the police report? Uh, there's not a police Honor, report. A police okay. Report. You know all this. Why would you come here? <laughs> why would you come to my court if you knew he was going to say all this and he was going to be able to prove because it and that it you does. were going to get tongue twisted when I asked you about raising your kids and how they ended up in uh, foster care? Plaintiff Taryn Tabor says the defendant is her son and she claims she was forced to file an emergency order of protection against him after he assaulted her. Why isn't there a police report, sir? Your Honor, it's not a police report because we never had access to that shit. We never we, had access to it. We never you had access to that he did it, man. The thing about that is... No, do you have proof that he did it? I have pictures where he bolted my door, locking me out, trying to take all my property. He wanted my home from me. And he locked me out. He bolted the floor. I can contest Here, all this, uh, I, I have pictures, have pictures of the bolts. Sure. I have statements. Uh, the locks that he changed the locks locked me out of my house he was supposed to move in and help me pay my bills because I had other obligations as far as my DUI and yeah, you have what you want and then, uh, <laughs> as far as he said he DUI. would help pay the bills if I would allow him he didn't have a place to live he was All homeless right, and I allowed him to move into my home and he said he would help All and then right. I have a statement also from my landlord that he was not Today allowed you're suing him for to change the stolen locks stolen property do you have any evidence or a police report? Well, people steal from you. You call the police. Uh, yes, sir. Here, Do you have uh, that? I have statements from my sister. Ma'am, one more time. Not this one. Do you one. have anything from the police? No, you because a I report? was not allowed at the property because of the EPO. You don't have to be on the property to talk to the police. The police live on the property. Uh, I, on August 1st, I filed an EPO on my son because he yeah, assaulted me. We're talking me. about him stealing. You're suing him about stealing stolen property. Why didn't you report it to the police? Because I had an EPO on me and I could not get in my shed. I didn't know it until after we got evicted and I got. Why didn't you judge. go to the police then? Because I already filed a small claim and when I filed an EPO the next day he went and filed a counter EPO there is my EPO on August 1st there's his EPO out of retaliation on August 2nd uh, and then we were both not allowed you want to talk about and try and prove the stolen property you are here for here's my statements 
Sir, and there's a copy of Go ahead, my, sir. What do you want to tell me? My the, the same, that ma'am, that's enough. Please place. let him talk. Please let him talk. The same EPOs that she's talking about are the same EPOs that we have filed on our mother as well. She's also filed an EPO on her own mother because her own mother threatened to blow up her house. Um, mm -hmm. So there's actually documentation let of that if you'd please. like to see that. These are that's actually, a lie. Those All right. are actually legal. You have anything Nobody to say about the stolen property? She's Nobody even knew where she lived. Sir, I, Your Honor, I've never been in the shed. I didn't have a key to the shed. Okay. She is the only person who had a key Good to the enough. shed. Good enough. And she has absolutely no evidence that you were. Uh, and f now your counterclaim, sir, for rent, hotel bills, and emotional distress. Yes, sir. Um, I moved into the house on 616. Um, the only way that I could move into this house is if I help her pay her back rent, which she owed $1,071.39. Back rent. Yes, she That's was behind in rent. This is the one receipt. I don't have the actual copy. She said it's a lie, but go ahead. I, that's a lie. And then, you what? That is a lie. Okay. Go and ahead. The, um, also, I also have another receipt from where I paid another $471 of her back rent. Let's see it, please. And there's the other one. Yep. But during that month and a half that we live there, it has been absolute hell. I have where she's broken into my house while I was living there. She's actually kicked in the front door. Um, the hotel bill, how does she I owe have you for this? That? Well, because of the fact of us getting evicted, because of all the time she's been to the house at 1.30 a.m. drunk, trying to kick in the door. Um, my girlfriend, right here, my fiance, has actually been there. What do you have to prove that's why you were evicted? I was at work. Uh, actually, I have the uh, order of eviction right here. Does it here. make reference to why? Yes, sir, it does on Let's this see. page right there. Is that the eviction notice? I because that. of all the violence and disturbance, I am ordering you all to evacuate the property. And that's actually, if you turn to the front, that's actually a legal court and document as well. I also have a statement stating that the house was never rented to him, and he only helped, he only let him move in to help me pay my bills. And if you look so at and puts, to live there, mm -hmm. and if you look at it the has hotel, both your names on this it. This is a good. It has uh, both. I'm, I'm looking at this one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No more of your nonsense. All that's over. And I also Judgment for the counterclaimant. You've proven your case, sir. Ma'am, you seem like you have a severe alcohol problem. I say, how about these drunk driving cases? Well, yeah, who cares? <laughs> you hear people out here getting killed. These people out here being killed things. over that. And you out here blowing it off like it's nothing. Your claim is dismissed. Judgment for the counterclaimant. You lie. I don't have anything to say. And, to say. and you too, Amber. You, you, two, both you, lie. you give up both of your children you, you and you can't point alcohol. fingers. Paperwork is evidence. That's well, all it is. You, know what? you, you better be lucky about drinking. that because you don't I have enough money. You don't have no more kids. I can't have no more kids. And I don't want any kids if they're any Amber, you don't want you. And she's a thing. You stole both your mother's vehicles, her whole purse. What does the judge say? It doesn't matter. It's still lies. You all's good at it.